that the sun shines down its power to all the world and makes the wind blow strong as it will. Hello, okay. ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 481st edition of Energy Week with George Harvey and the amazing Tom Fennell. Not in the flesh today. Oh, you are in the flesh. You just don't, you aren't in the studio. I'm not in the studio. I'm in the flesh. Tom is in the flesh. He just happens not to be in the studio. He's got a a uh, health problem that we hope he can has gets over soon. And in the meantime, oh, oh, oh. It's, it's annoying. It's what? But I say I hope I get over it soon too, because it's annoying. I believe it. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is all material that comes from my blog, geoharvey.com, and uh, it is available if you go down. Scroll down on the on the page, at a couple of in a couple of ways where you can go to the the website that Tom and I use specifically for it, or you can download the file. But you can go to to geoharvey.com and find the dates on the calendar, and find the 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 shows on the day on the uh, by clicking on the calendar. We're starting on Thursday, July 14th, and our first item. And I should I should put up a picture here, which is a picture of um, wind Looks turbines. Looks like a bunch of uh, turbines. It sure does. And that is... Uh, a large bunch the of them. What's that? It's a large bunch of them. Yeah, it's a bunch of them. They're on a beach sunbathing. Well, it's a large bunch. Yes. <laughs> what do you got for... What, <laughs> what do you got for a title for the... For the article. Renewables remain cost competitive amid global energy crisis, says Irina. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, you're going to tell us who Irina is. Irina is the International Renewable Energy Agency, and the, the synopsis for this is renewables are maintaining extremely cost competitive positions with prices in the industry dropping last year, even as the energy market tackles a global fossil fuel crisis, according to a report from the International Renewable Energy Agency. And, well, this, um, this is something that looks like it's not going to quit soon. The renewables last year dropped, onshore wind dropped by 15%, offshore wind dropped by 13%, and solar yeah. photovoltaic dropped by 13% as well. Yeah. So about two thirds of new renewables have lower costs than the cheapest coal-fired option. Yes, and this and is going to go renewables on. saved about fifty-five billion dollars. Yeah, I could use that. <laughs> As they say in Flatbush, wooden right. Wooden right. Wooden right. Okay. So benchmark Brent. Which is the benchmark, okay? It rose sixty seven percent on the back lack of the global on the back of the global economic rebound. Yeah. So oil okay. is going up and with oil goes things like coal, but uh, renewables are dropping. Yes. Now we should but go on to paraphrase the- Bill Clinton, it's it's the economics, stupid. That's right. Okay, we're going on to our next article, which is um, and here I'm fumbling here with uh, pictures from Clean Technica. Do you have? And we we have a picture up of a canoe EV. Actually, it's a picture of two of them. <laughs> well, actually, it's, you're right. It is two of them. What I saw the little vehicles. Well, Walmart, we all know them. They ordered 4,500 electric delivery delivery electric delivery vehicles from Canoe. That's right. And there's Walmart. more to come. Walmart is locked in a titanic struggle with Amazon to survive the fiercely competitive world of on- online retailing. To do that, it needs to find ways to reduce delivery costs. So it signed a deal with Canoe, the Southern California EV startup, to buy 4,500 
of its battery electric vehicles for delivery? Well, they have an option to buy 10,000 units, so they're, they're only just getting started. Yeah, they're, they're serious about this. Now, this is sort of the vehicle that we see in the picture, and it's called a lifestyle delivery vehicle. It's pretty clever. It's uh, designed for the purpose. Okay. Should we go on? Well, the LDV integrates the motors, the battery module, and other driving components. So it's sort of like a plug-in. Yeah. Okay. Our next item is uh, from the Hindu. We have a picture here of a solar power plant in India. Looks like a pretty large solar power plant, too. I think it's a large solar power plant. <laughs> <laughs> well, India has achieved clean energy targets before the deadline, says R.K. Singh. We'll maybe figure out who he is. Well, we'll, we'll find out pretty soon. India is, has achieved energy targets nine years ahead of schedule. Power Minister R.K. Singh said at the Sydney... Bingo. <laughs> yeah, at the Sydney Energy Forum in Sydney, Australia, India has installed 160 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity, which is 40 gigawatts. Is gigawatts, boy. That's right. It is. Even if you're even if you're not here in the flesh, they're they're gigawatts. <laughs> and uh, in, India has installed 162 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity which is 41% of the 402 gigawatts of electricity installed. Now, there's well, a, India has committed to installing 500 gigawatts of renewable energy in 2030, or by 2030. Yes, and there's been a lot of discussion in the news about what this man said and other people's views on it, and a lot of people are saying, no, that isn't true, we aren't. We didn't put this stuff in way ahead of schedule. In fact, he's we're, we they will be lucky if they keep on schedule. Well, India does today have the lowest per capita emissions in the world. They got a lot yeah. of people. They don't have a lot of emissions. In 2015, uh, India committed to ensuring that 40 percent of its energy would be from renewable sources by 2030. That is the one that they actually met. They've got they've got forty one percent of the electricity. Meeting well, them. considering that India is a large country and it really has not been heavily electro electrolyzed, they're just catching up. Yeah. Okay, we're up to Friday, July fifteenth. We have a picture of. Um, whoops. We have a. That looks like a solar field with a couple of turbines. Yeah, and the sea behind it. This is from Renews. What do Renewables you have? generation costs fall in 2021. Yeah, in 2021, the global weighted average cost of new renewable energy projects fell despite rising materials and equipment costs. And this is uh, according to a report from IRENA, which is the International Renewable Energy Association. The global levelized cost of electricity from onshore wind projects in 2021 fell to 3.3 cents per kilowatt hour, while that of solar fell to 4.8 cents. Now, this That's is worldwide. Cheap. That's it's pretty cheap. damn cheap. It's pretty onshore cheap. wind is still more expensive at, 13, at 7 and a half cents per kilowatt hour. Okay. And the yeah. costs fell despite rising materials and equipment costs. Yes, this is. I, I've been kind of surprised by these figures because the cost of oil has gone up, the cost of, of gas has gone up, the cost of equipment has gone up with those, and yet the pressure that is that is driving the cost of, uh, price of renewable electricity down is still there, and you know it's. It's uh, it's doing its work, even though those things are um, running along and and going up in price. Well, utility scale solar PV projects still continue to go down in cost. Yeah, yeah. So 
And I'm sure the yeah. wind is also falling. Yes, that's right. Okay, Tom. Um, our next item is got a a SpaceX Falcon taking off. This is from the BBC. Can rocket launches ever be green? Good question. Environmental effects of commercial space launches are a growing concern. There were 144 commercial launches last year, and at least three scientific research papers have already been published um, this year on the impact of the rocket emissions on the atmosphere. Well, something we haven't been looking at very, very heavily, and they're real. They're, they're not just real. They're big. I was <laughs> real and big. Yeah, they're real and they're big. I was very surprised by the by this report. Well, spaceflight is usually represented as having little or no impact on the environment. And that just simply isn't true. Yeah. Rocket engines spew out, spew out pollution. Yeah. And that's expected to increase. It is. And the number of commercial launches is expected to increase. So. Well, they go hand in hand, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Should we go on, Tom? I think we should. We got a wonderful picture of a solar array. We do indeed. That picture is from the Bureau of Land Management that's in the United States. This is from an organization Pretty called big Solar Array, let me tell you that. Yeah. This is from an organization called Electric. What do you have for Two thirds of new renewables were cheaper than coal in twenty twenty one. Two thirds. Two thirds. In 2021, 163 gigawatts, nearly two-thirds of new renewable power added, was cheaper than the cheapest coal-fired power plants in G20 countries. And a report released by the International Renewable Energy Agency says the cost for solar and wind power fell 13 to 15 percent. Now, this is what we were just saying. But they're taking a different tack on this and saying, you, you know, basically what this means is if you have a coal-burning power plant, it's, it's probably going to be cheaper to shut it down and build new wind and solar to replace it. That's a, that's, that's a no-brainer. That's what? A no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Well, it's been a no-brainer for a while. Well, renewables are by far the cheapest form of power today. Yes, they are. I absolutely agree. And renewable power frees economies from volatile fossil fuel prices. That is very important. Absolutely. Very, Very important. Okay, we are up to Saturday, July 16th, and we have a picture of a Tricastin, I don't. I my French pronunciation is ab- abhorrible. Um, this <laughs> I can't help you there. What? I can't help you there. I'm. I'm sure. Um, I could pronounce it if it was spelled the same way in Welsh, but you know that doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, French from- nuclear cuts extend to next week as temperatures soar. Right. This is from the Regina Leader. Post and EDF's nuclear plant output cuts are expected to stretch into next week as a heat wave sweeping across Europe pushes up river temperatures, reducing the ability to cool the plants. EDF said that two power stations on the Rhone River will produce less electricity in coming days. This is a problem when the t- when the temperature is high and the river water temperature goes up. The nuclear it's power not plant, as effective as a coolant, so they got to cut back. They have to cut back, and when it cools off outside, the river temperature doesn't go down all that fast, and so it takes the plants days or weeks to get back to full full speed. And by the way, um, this morning I, I looked, and there were ten nuclear power plants in the United States operating at below. Uh, full capacity, and my guess is that eight of those ten are probably uh, uh, have cut back because they can't keep up with the heat. That's 
probably correct, and that's very interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I didn't put that picture up. I should put that up so people can see what the nuclear plant looks like. And I apologize to our viewers. Well, I can't do anything about that, so I'm going to have to rely on you. <laughs> if 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 Tom were here, the whole thing would be better. What can I say? <laughs> okay. Our next item is um, is uh, from CNN, and it refers to a hypothetical um, wind forecast. So uh, what do you have for a title? This is interesting. Hypothetical weather forecast for 2050 is coming true next week. Right. This, this is, um, we are in the week now for this hypothetical forecast. And, for 2050. Uh, yeah, they were they were saying this this is what's going to happen in 2050, folks. We're going to have weather like this, and then they described the weather, and that's what we're what we have now in Brattleboro and other parts of the United States. I looked at the weather today; it's the second day in a row where the temperature was above 90, and they're expecting the temperature to stay above 90 for at least four more days. So I hear you when that happens. Yeah, I do, too. I, I do not enjoy super hot weather. Well, the climate crisis is pushing weather to the extreme all over the world. And temperatures in the northern latitudes have been particularly sensitive to these changes. Right. And that's where we are. Actually, climate having... change has already influenced the likelihood of temperature extremes. The chances of seeing 40 degree centigrade days in the UK couldn't be as could be as much as 10 times more likely in a current climate than under a natural climate unaffected by human influence. I'm going to say that again. That's that's a significant statement. I'm not going yeah. to say it again, but <laughs> you're not going to. Okay. Um, do you have more on that, or should we go on? No, no we should go on. We got a nice picture of a tractor coming up. This is not just any old tractor. This is a tractor uh, that has no diesel engine or gas engine. Bingo. It is powered by um, electric. And, so electric uh, pa partners with Nolan Manufacturing to produce more electric tra tractors. So they're expanding. Yep. Solectrac, based in Northern California, makes elect, uh, battery electric tractors for farming and utility operations. Solectrac announced it has entered into a partnership with Nolan Manufacturing to produce its battery electric tractors in North Carolina. So they got Solectric in Northern California, and they're going to be no, making them by Nolan in North Carolina. So they got the That's east and right. west coast wrapped up. I, w I and my guess is they're going to have stuff everywhere in between. That uh, nice picture, I think, is in a is in a vineyard, wouldn't you say, Tom? It looks like a vineyard to me. Absolutely, that is a vineyard. Yeah. Okay, we're up to Sunday, July seventeenth, and we have a picture of a guy here in a, at a dairy farm in North, New South Wales. And He's pointing at his cows. You can, if you look carefully, you can see them out there in the field. Okay. Um, this is from ABC, which is the Australian broadcast company. Well, Gippsland dairy farmers reign in unsustainable irrigation costs with solar power. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading it wrong. Gippsland dairy farmers reign in unsustainable irrigation costs with solar power. Right. I was really kind of surprised by this article, and the reason is because of the magnitude of, the, of, the, uh, of what it does. A major investment in renewable energy has helped an organic dairy farm in Gippsland region of New South Wales reduce irrigation-related electricity costs from almost a hundred thousand dollars per year to just fifteen thousand dollars. That's a factor um, of six. Yeah, that's right. Six to one. Now I should point out that these are Australian dollars. So each yes, Australian, Australian cows. 
Yeah. Um, Australian dollars are worth about 75 cents American. Something like that, yep. Yeah. It's still significant. It, it, it is very significant. This farm has 300 cows. Imagine paying $75,000 a year for electricity for milking and keeping 300 cows. That is a lot of money. On a per cow basis, how do you make money selling milk? Well, you probably don't. Okay. I'm not sure selling milk has has, has ever been profitable. I don't know. My father... My my father worked on a dairy farm in in um, in Winchester, New Hampshire, when he was a teenager, and he told me he believed the guys who were running that farm never grossed more than about six hundred dollars a year. You know, no, like I said, they were, it's really not a very profitable enterprise. No, and they well, they're in that business because they love farming. They love farming, and they're capable of being very resilient, very self sufficient. So. Move on. Yeah, we got a picture of a Portuguese air tanker coming up. Yeah, that's right. Why is Portuguese? I don't know, but maybe the story tells us. Well, you know, I look. I looked. I didn't. I couldn't use the BBC photograph. This is from BBC, so I found a photograph at Unsplash, and this was labeled as a Portuguese air air tanker. So that's what I put in. Well, you're Um, not going to call him a liar. No, I'm not. Um, what do you have? For, what do you have for title, Tom? European heat wave: colon. Deadly wildfires spread in the Mediterranean. This is a serious problem, and it's not. Well, let me read the synopsis. Thousands of firefighters continue to battle wildfires in Portugal, Spain, and France, as a heat wave shows no sign of easing. A pilot died when his water bombing plane crashed in Portugal. That's not the not the uh, plane we're looking at. The Portuguese authorities say that at least 238 people have died from the heat over the past week. And this heat wave, as we will see, has spread into other parts of of uh, Europe. But it's well, fires are ravaging in areas of France's southwest. Over 12,000 people have been evacuated. Yep. And heat waves have become more frequent, more intense, and last longer. Why? Because of human-induced climate change. (laughs) I suppose. That's what the article said. Huh? That's what the article said. Uh, I'm not making this up. We're going to have more to say about that, too. Um, well, the French Weather Service has forecast temperatures of up to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Hey, that's hot. In parts of the country south on Sunday, and new heat records are predicted for Monday. That's in yeah. France. Well, yesterday in London, it was 104 degrees. It never gets that hot in London. <laughs> Never. It has never been over. I don't think it's ever been above a hundred before. I, when I was a young man, had a had an English girlfriend, and she told me that in England, when it gets uh, when it, the temperature goes a, above eighty degrees, everyone goes on strike. <laughs> now, okay. Why not? That is, what's that? Why not? Why not? Part of that is a reflection of the English. But part of it is, you know, I lived in Devon. The house that we lived in, the inside of the house, never went above 65 degrees all summer. That okay. in the, that's in the southwest corner almost. It's the only county that's west of it is Cornwall. And, you know, it's, it, that area is the warmest area in the, in the U.K. And yeah. it's... It, it's very surprising. There are palm, native palm trees. Yep. And there are there are um, uh, invasive scorpions living along the coast. Gotta watch but, out for them. Huh? Gotta watch out for them. You gotta watch out for the scorpions. Well, these are these are little bitty scorpions. If you're wearing, well, okay. unless you step on one barefooted, you're going to be okay. Okay. <laughs> We have a picture of wind turbines. Let me put that up so people can see it. There we go. 
And um, this is from Clean Technica. Regional investment strategies can unlock clean energy opportunities. Right. As Congress keeps debating investing in the U.S. clean energy transmission, the transition rather, RMI, that's Rocky Mountain Institute, has released a report outlining how regional investment strategies can unlike, unlock, ah, let me say it right, unlock emerging and growing clean energy opportunities for everything from offshore wind to EVs and green hydrogen. Well, the United mm -hmm. States has lagged in advancing a strategic plan to catch up to China and Europe in a clean yeah. energy transition. Right. Right. So there we have it. You know, this is a this is a uh, uh, the RMI is saying we can do this, but importantly, it's being done on the local level. So if if you wanted to invest, if you lived in Brattleboro and you wanted to invest in clean energy, a good thing to do would be to make that investment in Brattleboro or in Wyndham County or you know, maybe maybe Cheshire County or Franklin County because they're close. But the, that the makes more sense to investigate in Winnipeg. It it does. It also makes more sense than investing in a in a business that is absolutely huge and all over the world. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, we're up to Monday, July eighteenth, and we have a picture of a crystal ball. And everything is upside down. <laughs> what do you expect? It's a crystal ball. You know, this is what crystal balls do. You look in a crystal ball. If you have it, if you happen to be holding it in the in the right position, it's going to show you upside down, badly distorted, everything around you. Uh, the person, the person who's reading a crystal ball, you know, under candles and and asking for. Uh, uh, money for it, uh, they don't look at a crystal ball like this. They look at it a different way. Anyway, we have a, this is an article from Clean Technica. Do you have a, a title? A, yeah, title. I can, I can dig one up. Okay. U.S. EIA projected the future of electricity generation in 2001. Why were they so wrong? Yeah. Back in 2001, the U.S. Energy Information Administration used its crystal ball to forecast the future of the U.S. electric supply through 2020. They forecast more coal, a small role for renewables, and steady growth in demand. So what went wrong? Now, one thing I should point out is that they, they forecast increased use of coal and coal use has dropped by 50%. Yeah, they, they did not anticipate the collapse of coal. No, they didn't they didn't anticipate that at all. They didn't anticipate what would happen to the uh demand for electricity as LED lighting came in, as other uh, uh efficiencies were rolled out and they they also did not understand that the cost of wind power and solar power, if they looked at it historically, they would have seen that both of those were dropping like very, very fast. And they should have been able to anticipate this if they had known about Wright's Law. But they didn't know about Wright's Law, apparently, and their forecasts were just bad, which was which is kind of un unfortunate. Well, the article goes into that in a little bit more detail. Why was the EIA so far off with regards yep. to wind and solar power? We could spend right. the rest of the day talking about that, but I think we we'll could. move on. And you know, one of the things that was that's interesting to me about this is that when when I started working on my blog in 2012, they had the EIA had built up a long record of um, being wrong in this. And they, they made the same projection year after year for solar power, which was it's going up um, exponentially, but within the next 18 months, it'll level off. 
They did this every year. Every year they said, well, it's been going up exponentially, but in the next 18 months it'll level off. And they knew that they were right happen. year after year. You can't say that over and over and over and over again and be anything like right because it keeps going up exponentially. And um, so they were they were just wrong. And and they were it was almost something to joke about. Um, they finally acknowledged it and started working on it, but I, I don't think they really even got it right now. I don't. I looked at the reasons that were given about why and clean technica. Clean technica. I don't yeah. think that the, I don't think they're actually correct. Well, from the but, article, from the very end of the article, and yeah. right now. Given the urgency of addressing climate change, we need a lot of change. That's correct, yeah. Okay, our next item is from the BBC. And we got a, a nice picture of a heat wave. We have a picture of a heat wave, and that building that looks like a castle there might be a castle. Um, this is The picture, by the way, is not in... The UK, the article's in the UK. I know that the picture is not in the UK because I went and found it. It's oh, in, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, in, uh, it's actually in Romania. But, you know, picture's a picture. What do you got for a title, Tom? UK heatwave, Colin. Country may have hottest day on record with a 41 degree C forecast. Now, 41 degree C forecast, about 106 degrees are Fahrenheit. That's right. The UK could set a second could set a record for the hottest day this week with temperatures forecast to hit up to 41 degrees C, which is 106 degrees Fahrenheit. They actually, you know, I know this because I've been watching. They actually did hit 40.4. So they were at 105. Oh, came close. That was pretty close. The current record was 38.7 degrees as opposed to hitting 41 or yep. in fact 40.04 or 40.4 I'm sorry um it was the cur- the record that was that was broken was 38.7 and that was in Cambridge the met office the Met the uh, meteorological office issued a red extreme heat warning for Monday and Tuesday in much of England. There's a real scary map of, of the UK in that in that article. <laughs> yes, there is. And it shows a huge amount it of... It shows the heat in the UK. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, should we go on, Tom? I think we should. We can't dance here. Uh, not with you home. <laughs> well, I haven't read the rest of these things, so I'm going to be winging it from now on. That's okay, Tom. You wing it so well. Um, our next item is from Clean Technica. We have a picture of a Ford F-150 Lightning. In fact, the picture actually says Ford F-150 Lightning, and that came Wait from... Wait a second. Ford. We got... Uh, I'm on the wrong picture. Are you? I want a picture... To, the picture that I'm looking at is a heat wave... A picture of a heat wave, and we just talked about that. That's yeah, I said it was a scary map of the UK, so let's, let, let me scroll down to the next one. Here. Okay. Oh, there okay. it is, a Ford F-150 Lightning. Yeah. That's what I'm supposed to be looking at, isn't it? That's what you're supposed to be looking at. You know, uh, for, for anybody in the audience who's curious, I have a motto, which is I'm in a desperate rush to get to bed by 930. Um and uh, so I believe we can we can be patient here. Okay, <laughs> what do you have for a title for this article? Sunrun installs seven hundred thousand solar roofs. How about seven hundred thousand more for Ford F one hundred and fifty Lightnings? Yeah, why not? Sunrun, the number one rooftop solar installer in the United States, just installed its seven hundred thousand. Uh, rooftop solar system. Now, Sunrun has partnered with Ford to combine solarizing homes with electrifying their transport via the Ford F-150 Lightning. This is from Clean Technica. And so by the way... They're putting solar panels on the roof of these trucks. 
they're, they're using the solar panels on the on the roof of the house to power the truck. And oh, that's, so that's, that's the way they're doing it, huh? Yeah. And that's okay. interesting because the F-150 Lightning has gear in it that makes it possible for the truck to power the house if the grid Yes, yes. So this is this is something that I think is probably going to be very popular. Um, well, if you're looking at that picture, you're looking yeah. at a funk. Or a frunk? A frunk? Yes, yeah, a front trunk. Yeah, that's right. There's no motor when, there. When you open up the space that should should have a motor in it, it doesn't have a motor in it. It's got the frunk, which is a front end trunk. Tom knows what he's doing. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, we are up to Tuesday, July 19th, and we have what I think is one of the most interesting items of the week. I'm going to put this up so people can see it. You're going to have that, to explain what that picture is. I have to explain it, yeah. Um, that picture is a... I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Let's see. <laughs> There's a. Uh, there we go. There was a. There was a. A note from the PowerPoint thing that I was using, asking me if I wanted to close the program or whatever. Um, okay. This this picture has three panels. The one that is on the left was well, the picture was taken in 2018. The one that is in the middle was taken in 2019, and the one on the right was taken in 2020. Now, this article is from CNN. So, Tom, do you have a, do you have a, have a uh, title? I think I do. Okay. Quote, greener pastures, colon, can ancient echo engineering help fix our degraded landscapes? Yeah, land management is one of the key issues facing the planet in the 21st century. As a result of climate change, droughts are becoming longer and more intense, and severe flooding is getting worse. But the land can be restored by using old techniques. And what's happening in this picture is just fascinating. Those things in the left Looks like it's getting pretty green and greener. That's right. The, the the half moon shaped things, the the semicircular shaped things, on the in the left image there, are actually very shallow ditches. They call them have, buns. They call them they yeah they do and they're just there like to catch water. They're there to catch water. They're they're not very deep. I think they're only about a foot and a half deep in the deepest part, and in the along the the straight edge, they they come up right flush with the land. But any of the earth that has been taken out of them is put into a into a uh, 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 mound that runs around the the end there. The idea is, as water runs down a hill, it runs into the straight side of these things and is trapped. And so they prevent the water from just running off the land. Now, that land... It gets into the, into the ground. Yeah. That land in the left image is severely degraded. I mean, the only thing that you see... Looks really like a desert. Good, it does, except that it's got a couple of trees that have roots that are deep enough to get down to water that's way underground. Now, what happens is they they dug these things, and then they threw grass seed in them. And in the, in the area where this happens, they get something like six and a half inches of rain every year. That is not a lot of rain. But using these bungs, the, the, the water was trapped, and the result of that is that the grass seed can sprout and grow so that in the, in, after a year all of those bungs are full of grass. And the grass just keeps spreading. So in the se at the end of the second year, probably half of that land is covered with grass. Now, this land is in Kenya, as I recall, or Tanganyika. 
I can't know. tell you, but it's somewhere over there. Yeah, it's it's in one of those Eastern African countries. Um, and that land was being used for pasture 50 years ago. But overgrazing and climate change turned it into the next best, the next step away from being desert. And that what they're doing is they're turning it back into green land again. And they're doing this all across Africa, all the way from the from the uh, west coast of Af- Africa to the east coast. They've got the countries are doing things like this. This article, by the way, they're doing them in the dry parts of Africa, not the not the uh, Sahara. De- they're doing them in like the Sahara Desert. Is- Along the Sahara Desert, in order to prevent the Sahara from continuing its its southward uh, march. Um, oh, by the way, the pictures are in Tanzania or Tanzania. Tanzania. Okay. Did you read the title for this? I'm not sure that you did. Well, I'm going to do it again. Okay. Greener pastures. Can ancient echo engineering help fix our degraded landscapes? Okay, and I'll read the synopsis. Land management, I've, I've read this already, is one of the key issues for the, facing the 21st century. They're using old techniques to do this. And by the way, this article also has some interesting pictures uh, showing restoration of peat bogs in Northern Ireland. Yep. Very and so, there's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff. This is an article that I would strongly recommend to people, and it is... Um, from CNN, as I said, and it is very hopeful in terms of what you can do. Okay, should we go on, Tom? Might as well. Okay, we have a picture of dry weather, yeah, and I, another item from CNN, and this a very lonely is, looking is, tree. What? A very lonely looking tree. Yes. What do you have for a title? Hot records are outpacing cool by more than 10 to 1 this year, this year as Europe and the U.S. brace for dangerous heat. Yeah, records for high are temperatures. are cool by 10 to 1. Wow. That's right. Records for high temperatures are far outpacing cool records worldwide this year as Europe and the United States brace again for dangerous heat waves. Globally, 188 all-time heat records were broken this year versus 18 records for cold weather. Now, they're talking about basically half a year here, and during that half, you would expect um, the cold weather to pre- to actually have a higher number than the hot because you start with the three winter months are in this, and then... And then um, um, three spring months, and now we've almost done uh, one month of summer. But basically, if if we had these these kinds of numbers for the whole year, what we could say is if the year were normal, the number of all-time heat records should be approximately equal to the number of all-time cold records. Now, what we're seeing here is there are still cold records, but the heat records are ten times as many. So if anybody wonders uh, whether climate change is happening or not, this is a very strong ar- argument saying, yeah, it's happening, and it's happening big time. This is not a joke. The earth there is, is getting warmer. What? The earth is getting warmer. That's right. Okay, should we go on to the next one? I think we should, bro. I think we should. That's a picture of the Capitol. Yeah, with a big sign that says "caution" out in front. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> and this. Well, is let's, I'll read the title, and you can tell us why. Okay, you got a deal. U.S. Senate Democrats urge Biden to declare a climate emergency. This is really bad news. They're still talking about this on the radio. Yes, this is from MSN. Two U.S. Senate Democrats, Sheldon Whitehorse, who is from Rhode Island, and Jeff Markley, who is from Massachusetts, urged President Joe Biden to declare a climate emergency and use the Defense Production Act to ramp up production of a wide range of renewable energy products and systems, including solar panels. 
Interesting. So basically, and, and you know, we, we will talk again about that. Um, actually, we won't talk again about that. He, I'm not Biden, sure we might, but not today. We will next week. Um, President Biden has has said this is a serious problem, and this right. was uh, brought about because because the senator from West Virginia, um, and I and his name is escaping me right now. Um, Mansion. What? It's Mansion. That's man, right. C-H-I-N, man, chin. Man, chin. Right. You're right, Tom. Um, he ha- he kind of has been delaying our, the the tra- changeover to, to uh, renewable energy, and this puts uh, Biden in a spot. So, you know, he has to deal with this. And well, his support in West Virginia comes greatly from coal mining. Yeah, which you you'd think – that that would that would dry up because you take Donald Trump's presidency for example, West Virginia didn't get any more coal miners. They didn't create any jobs in West Virginia during Donald Trump's presidency. I don't think they did. There were, what? I don't think they did. The coal miners in the United States under Donald Trump lost about a third of their jobs. Some jobs were created, but they were not in West Virginia. They were in Wyoming. I can believe that. Yeah. Okay, we're up to Wednesday, July 20th. We have three items left. and um, I can uh, scroll down to it. <laughs> you can scroll down. Oh, here we go. we got a picture here of a burned home in South Yorkshire. Is that – am I on the right one? I don't think so. Um, I'm having trouble myself. The first – no – that it's the it's the one above that Tom. It's public land. Uh, it says something about public lands, but I don't have any picture yet. Oh, public lands! Yeah, there's a picture. It looks like a desert. It looks like you're on the edge of the desert. It happens that this is public land. Um, the article is from the Center for American Progress, and Tom, I'll bet you that you have a title for the article. I got a title. Yep. The oil industry's grip on public lands and waters may be slowing progress toward energy independence. Of That's public lands in the western United States, 77% that are ideal for renewable energy projects are in areas with low or no oil and gas potential. But they are still prioritized for gas and oil leasing and that is an interesting and it can slow progress yes it's very that interesting. doesn't make sense but i'm sure there's a logical reason for it um there is a logical reason for it and the logical reason starts with something that looks like an s but there's two lines through it i've seen that symbol yes i have yep i think <laughs> you're right i think so should we go to the next uh well uh, let's I got a quick takeaway here. Balance is a word frequently used to describe how the federal government should approach the management of national public lands and waters. In fact, the founding legislation of the U.S. Bureau of Land Management, the largest land agency in the country, emphasizes the the need for balanced and diverse resource uses requiring that the lands under its jurisdiction be managed for a combination of conservation, recreation, wildlife, habitat, and energy development. That's not what's happening, though. No, it's not. And, you know, as as we had said, there's a thing that looks like an S with two lines through it. And my guess is... Yeah, I wonder why. A lot to do with what's going on here. As they say, money talks, something else walks. That's right. Okay, we are up to um, this article that you mentioned just now from the BBC and a picture of a picture a burned, of a burned home. That's right. And this is, uh, you have the title. I got a title here. Fires blaze as the UK passes a 40 degree C for the first time. 
That's that's that, that's right. That's the street temperature. That's right. In the UK, over 30 locations went past the previous record. This is 30 different locations in the UK broke what had been the record of 38.7 degrees C set in uh, 2019. Uh, at one village in Lincolnshire, uh, the temperature went to 40.3 degrees Celsius, which is 104.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty warm. And it's pretty warm, and you know England is just not ready for this. You're not used to that kind of heat. It was it was it was 104.4 in London. That's that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. As I said, that girlfriend I had said, if it's 80 over 80, everybody goes on strike. They don't have air conditioners. Some wow. people, they, you know, when I lived there, they didn't even have refrigerators or central heating. But, you know, air conditioners? Are you kidding me? Why would you need an air conditioner? They're in a place that's cooler than Vermont. Um, with, the heat, with the heat comes a surge of fires. Now, that's why we have a picture of a burned home. But other things have happened. Train service has been canceled because the rails buckled. Yep. Overhead cables that carried the electricity for the trains failed. And there were a lot of fires with this. A lot of consequences. A lot of consequences. They're not used to mm -hmm. this. Yeah, they had they had planes, uh, uh, flights that commercial flights that were canceled. Uh, they just they just had a mess on their hands, and um, they they were not ready for this at all. So, and of course, my daughter and her husband. They're still living there, there, aren't they? They are living in Glasgow, which is, you can bet it's hot, but it's not hot like But it's not as hot as London. But they went on vacation just before the heat wave. And where did oh, they go? Oh, how lucky. <laughs> are they back home now? No, not yet. They, they went to Italy. And in Italy, they have a drought that is just unbelievable. And they I was just going to say, but it's hot in Italy, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's hot in Greece and Turkey. Um, anyway, that's that. That's all pretty destructive. Should we go on? We have one more. No, just with with uh, high heat comes a potential for more fires. That's right, and that's this fire. You can't say that the heat causes the fires, but it 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 makes them happen better. This particular fire that you're looking at in this picture in South Yorkshire. Um, a guy realized that there was a fire in the backyard. The grass had caught fire. Now, how the grass had caught fire, I don't know. But he, he and his son tried to tried to fight the fire with a with a with a garden hose, and they couldn't do it. And the fire spread to the houses, and the houses burned. Which is all, you know, pretty sad. It is okay. Sad. Huh? It is that. It is. Okay. And like you said, we're talking about the uh, letter S with a couple of lines through it. Yes, that's right. Okay, our last item from uh, is from Clean Technica, and it has a picture of a car called a, a Chevrolet Equinox EV. You cannot buy these cars yet, but they are coming soon. What you do can't you buy them yet, huh? In an no, AP no, no, no. interview, GM's Mary Barra explains her strategy to catch Tesla by 2025. This is, you know, this woman is really um, setting, she has set herself an amazing goal. She knows what she's goal. doing. What? She knows what she's doing. I believe she does. GM's goal of catching up to Tesla for EV sales by 2025 Seems like an impossible climb. GM still has still only sells about one tenth of the number of electric vehicles that Tesla does. Mary Barra, who is the um, C CEO, I think of GM, says she thinks they're still going to pull it off by focusing on parts of the market where Tesla is having trouble. What parts of the market? Um, well, 
the parts of the market where most people are who want to buy new cars and can't afford luxury items. Okay. So that's what she wants to do. She wants to sell electric vehicles that are not, you know, they're just regular cars. This, well, this she's of- ahead of the curve right now, I think. But, I mean, it's inevitable. Yeah. She's a she's a very bright woman. I think everybody um, in the business acknowledges that. Whether she can pull this off, well, she's talking about absolute numbers of car sales, not the value of the car sales. So it's possible that GM could outsell Tesla in terms of the numbers of cars and still only have half the gross income. Yeah. I don't know. But, you know. Well, Tesla only sells electric vehicles, right? Tesla only sells, the vehicles that Tesla sells are all electric, but Tesla also sells sure. batteries. Yeah. Huh? Uh, they, also, they also sell batteries and uh, photovoltaic panels. They sell, yeah, 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 but they, they don't sell gas cars. No, they do not sell cars for people who drink gas. How about that? How about that? Okay. We are at the end of the show, Tom. Kind of looks like that, because my, uh, my screen says minute 59. See me. Yeah. That is, and we have a, a sign here that says, have a certifiably marvelous week. Let me put that up so that everybody can read it, and then I'll come back to the death. <laughs> I'll come I back see to the it. Death. You don't have to see it. You know what it says. I know what it says. I will wave two arms, one for me and one for Tom. I know that Tom is waving from home, but... Well, I am now. Yeah, absolutely. So we hope everybody has a certifiably marvelous week, and we say goodbye. Adios, amigos. Adios. You're supposed to say, oh, come back now, you hear? Yeah, that's right. I am. (laughs) I'll say, y'all come back now, you hear? Did I did I say it right this time, Tom? You don't know, quite. You're pronouncing the R in here a little bit too much. A little bit too much. I'll work on that. <laughs> See you later. Alligator. <laughs> <laughs>